Um, the, next pra the next problem that someone asked me to do was do the inverse. All right, and find the inverse of f of x equals 2x squared minus 3. This was number 9. So I have f of x equals 2x squared minus 3. So what they're asking us to do is find the inverse. Remember, the inverse, there's a whole bunch of step-by-step -step method that we did, Daniel, to do this. Um, to do that step-by-step -step method, what we did is we rewrote our function now as an equation. So I replaced the f of x with the y. Then what we did is we swapped the x and the y's. And now we need to solve for y. So to solve for y, we're going to now use our inverse operations. So whatever's happening to our variable, now we're going to undo it. So therefore, I'll add 3. So I get x plus 3 equals 2 y squared divided by 2. So I have x plus 3 divided by 2 equals y squared. Ooh. Then I'll take the square root. So therefore, I have y equals the square root of x plus 3 divided by 2. And, but remember, whenever we introduce the square root, we have to make sure we include the positive and the minus. Yes, no? OK, Ricardo? OK. So now we can include the positive and the minus. And then our last step is now to rewrite this in now is to need, make sure we need to rewrite this as a function. So if we're going to write it as f inverse of x equals, now we can't have the positive and the negatives for y equals this, because therefore we would not have a function. So therefore, we're only going to represent as a function the inverse of the positive value. All right, And I can kind of show you guys that why that would be the case. But if we're going to represent a functional inverse, we have to make sure it's a function. If I include positive and negative, what I would have is I would have not a function. So I want to make sure that my inverse is still going to represent a function. So I'll only use the positive value. OK? Sure. Yeah, wish I had a student that was nice enough to get up out of the seat.